be awesome? It really was. And uh, I'm humored. Um, it's like God tickles us sometimes, and tonight I got a tickle from him because um, all week I struggled in what I was going to teach because everything the Holy Spirit was leading me, uh, it, the direction in felt so extremely basic. Like, you know, I could be teaching this to a new believers class kind of a thing. And I'm like, you know, I'm all into the mysteries and the deep water and I, that's where I like to play. But he just really would not at all uh, let up on me. And literally, I had probably... 50 or 60 slides of things that, that I was wanting to go, and he kept just diverting me back to tonight and what he wanted me to teach tonight. And, um, so, and I just want to clarify that V and I have not spoken at all about what I was going to teach. I mean, not one, I don't even think we talked today, or a little bit yesterday maybe, but, um, oh yeah, we'll do communion after because I feel like it's time. And so, um, as I get into the, t do what? No, not at all. And so, as I start teaching, um, I'll kind of be explaining um, what really was going on uh, as we were engaging during worship and how how Holy Spirit just always orchestrates things. And um, I'm just, like I said, I'm just tickled by it because if you knew the struggle, the internal struggle I was having all week preparing, because I really just, you know, like I said, it was just so basic. And I'm like, seriously? And so do you see what this is? And the more that we get, in, the more that I get into the lesson, the more you're going to go, oh wow. So tonight we're going to talk about uh, friendship with Holy Spirit, and the verse that He gave me was, "Out of your belly shall flow." Twelve, number twelve. Is that it? No. Number twelve. See all that we're not even going through. Okay, so don't even worry about that. We're, we're starting where we, we are. So, so the text of the verse tonight is John 7, 37, I think, through 39. And I, I'm going to read it. It's, probably, it's on the screen up there. And it said, On the last day, the great day of the feast, Yeshua stood and cried out, saying, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly or heart will flow rivers of living water. But this he spoke concerning the Spirit, whom those believing in him would receive, for the Holy Spirit was not yet given because Yeshua was not yet glorified. Okay, now, to me this is basic. But what he kept saying to me was that um, because of the age that we have entered, the the, the movement of the Spirit was part of the importance of what we're going to be partaking in. Because he's making reference to water and the Holy Spirit in that scripture. And we're going to get more into it a little bit. But before I do that, this sounds so weird. Before I do that, um, I, want to, I want to touch on a few principles that's going to be a platform of what we're going to talk about. Now, one of those principles that, that, I, that I want to share about is that the kingdom and all that it contains is always expanding and in the process of growth and maturation. Everything with the kingdom is ever expanding, ever growing, always I don't want, evolving. It's always advancing. Okay, now, where is the kingdom? Okay, in us. So what does that mean? We are always going to be expanding and growing and maturing and advancing. Now, remember that eternity is in our heart, right? 
Now, eternity encom encompasses the realm of was, is, and is to come. Okay? So if eternity is in us, what realms are within us? Was, is, and is to come. Okay? So we're... Just keep putting our dot, the dots together. Now, Sean brought up a scripture uh, last week, and it was Hebrews 2.8, which reveals this principle. I don't know where Michael went, so you got it? Okay, so go to the uh, slide number 15. There. Okay, now this is the scripture that Sean mentioned that really kind of reiterates this principle of always expanding and growing. All right, and let's, get, let's go read it. Let me go to my sheet up here. It says, Hebrews 2, 8, and this is the King James Version, if you're wondering. It says, You have put all things in subjection under his feet, for in that he put all in subjection under him. He left nothing that was not put under him. But now we do not see yet but now we do not yet see all things put under him. Now, see, that is, that, that is the realm of was, is, and is to come. So we know that things are in that process of becoming, is what this is basically talking about. So out of the realm of was, we enter into the realm of is, and we progress into the realm of is to come. So that is, that is how the kingdom works. It's very circular. It's not linear, it's circular. And so as we, um, let me go back to my notes. Now, now, in the, now in that scripture, we clearly see that there is the completion, right, of what, what Christ did for us. It's fully complete. Yet, even in the completion, we do not see it completely manifested yet. I mean, can we, can we see that? Now, we are becoming who we already are. Okay, so we, we have to have that correct thinking and the mind of Christ thinking. And we're learning to think as he thinks. Now, the renewing of our mind is a process of growing in how we think. We are basically only rewiring our brains. Because our brain has been, and I'm not going to go deep into this. I'm just going to kind of hit the surface. Our brains have been programmed by our past circumstances, experiences, and culture. It's been programmed. And so we have to deprogram our mind in how we think, and that's what the renewing of the mind is. Now, along with renewing of our mind, there has to be the restoration and the, the healing of emotions that have been damaged. Okay. Now, how this and our soul being new, how that works is I don't think we quite completely understand that process. Because I believe at salvation we do get a new soul. But I'm concluding, just from my own kind of understanding, is that there is so much that is stored in our bodies, traumas, things in our life that have happened, the ways we think are stored in our bodies that are affecting how our new soul manifests. Now, again, I think that, pro for me, that process is being redefined because I used to think a certain way about all that, and I don't still think that way. But I do, th I do see that there is the completion, yet there is also the process. And so... I think a renewed mind is to govern our emotions and they, it assists in the healing and the restoration of our emotions because as a man thinks, so he is. And so I believe our emotions are supposed to follow what, our, what we believe and what our mind does. And so, again, things in the spirit are not linear. They can be. And they can appear random, but they are not. And so I think in that whole process of becoming who we already are is, is a journey that God's taking us on as a body. And so that's one of the principles that I want to talk about because I think we're ever growing and ever expanding. I don't think it's just, I, it, there's no limitation. There's no limitation. And I do think that 
that how God, how God has created us is I think the more we grow in understanding who Yeshua is and what he did, the more our understanding is going to change in how the, how the human being comes into a, that place of wholeness and oneness in God. Because we're one with God, right? Okay. But if we were the fullness of that right now, we would be glowing. I mean, the old, under the old covenant, they glowed. Moses glowed just from being in the presence of God. And we can go into the presence of God with no restriction, yet we're not glowing yet. Okay, and so let's, let's not get, you know, kind of wiggy about that process and just kind of, kind of learn as we grow. Now, the second principle that I want to talk about, and it's more kind of attached to kind of the direction we're going to go in in our lesson tonight, and that is our releasing what is in heaven to the earth. Okay? Now, again, we don't go up into heaven, get stuff, and bring it back down. Okay? I know we use those words, but we, we aren't doing that. What we're doing is we go into the kingdom that is within us, and we release that kingdom into the earth. Okay? And so let's make sure that we're structuring our mind and the pictures that we are holding because those pictures are really important. Because if you think you've got to go up and go somewhere, that there's always going to be a resistance to that. Because it's not truth. Now, it may sound good and religious and all that, but it's not the truth. The truth is the kingdom is within us, so we go in, and how do we, how do we bring that reality into this earth? We release it, okay? And we're going to talk tonight about how we actually are releasing that. Now, as a son, we have been given Adam's original mandate, right? Does anybody remember what that was? You can just... Those who love it will eat of its fruit. So we see in this scripture that the intention of God and one of his technologies that he has established for us is that we are to be satisfied from the fruit of what we speak and the produce of our lips. We will be filled. Now, can you see the importance of how we govern our mouth? Because we will not ever be satisfied if we don't control our mouth so that we can produce the fruit that we need. Okay, and so, so part, of, part of what we need to recognize is, and, and we've talked about this, that we are citizens of a voice-activated kingdom. Okay, we, do, you, do we get that? that everything hinges on our voice activating the kingdom. Because we're, we're going to really dig, dig deeper into this. And so that leads me into, there, there is a requirement for us to use our voices to release the frequency of God through Holy Spirit into the earth realm to change it. Our voices carry the breath of God. Now, Elohim did not internally think or speak within himself when he created. He spoke. That's the pattern. You can sit and internally contemplate all you want and that will change you but it will not bring heaven out into the earth that is done through our body our body is the gate and pathway of the the reality of heaven 
infiltrating the earth. Now, we can, we can go all around that if we want, but that is the pattern in Scripture. And it requires us to engage our speaking and our body to release heaven into the earth. Okay. Now, tonight, that is exactly what we were doing. Did you feel the ease of your body moving because the spirit was moving? Okay. Did you feel that freedom to do that? Yes. Okay. Now, what we have to learn to do is when there's not that freedom, that we do it to break through. Now, that's, that's a whole different realm right there, is doing something when you don't feel like doing it. That's what usually trips us up. What we got going on back there? <laughs> okay, so, so recognize that it's easy when the spirit is moving to move your body and to open your mouth and to sing the high praises, okay? That's, but, but that's not all of what sons do. Sons go, oh, there's resistance. So guess what? I got to pull my, pull my pants up, take off my huggies, <laughs> be a grown-up, and break through the resistance. Well, you, bet, you put, your, put your, oh, he's saying, don't take off my huggies. <laughs> He said, I'm not ready. Well, guess what? Everyone else in this room is ready or should be. Okay? Everyone else should be. Now, now Yeshua followed the same pattern, right? He spoke and he released his breath in the Holy Spirit. When he cast out a demon, he didn't think it. He said, in the name of Jesus, come out. I don't know if he said in the name of Jesus. <laughs> he said, in my name, come out, maybe. <laughs> You know, whatever. But, but, the, but the thing is, he spoke it or he touched them. He had to, so we have to engage our body for the spirit to move through us. And so we need to just settle into that reality, okay? Because for us to govern the earth, we're going to have to engage our body so that the earth can be affected by the spirit moving out and through our body. Okay? There is such release in dance. There's a release in moving the flags. All of that is the spirit being released into the earth. Now you can, and I'm going to talk a little bit about contemplation. We can sit contemplating all day. But until we engage our body Whatever we're contemplating or whatever we're meditating on will not open up into this realm until my body engages it. Okay? Is, is that, do we got, do we got all that? Because I can, I can ha keep hammering it if I need to. So our bodies are involved in manifesting and releasing heaven on earth through Holy Spirit. Okay, we all, we got that? Now, there is a, often a resistance within us and without, okay? There just is. How many of you, you, know, you, when, you when I first went into charismatic circles, raising your hand was an act of God. Do y'all remember those days? It was like a spotlight was on you. You know, you come out of the Baptist church where you sit there and you sing your hymnal, but, and you go into a charismatic church and you just want to lift up your hands. But everything in you goes, don't do that, don't do that, don't everybody seeing you, do you do, you know? And you go through this whole process and you become so introspective that it shuts you down. And, and, and it's when you go to pick up a flag, you're like, oh my gosh, you know? And see, all of that is a resistance within us and outside of us. We have to recognize it's both, but they're in agreement. And we have to break that agreement and just do it. Okay? There's, you can pray, maybe cast it out, lay hands on your head and cast that thing out, because it's probably a spirit, it's probably a demonic spirit involved in it. Now say we go, well, wait a minute now. Because if you want to do something and you can't, you need to think that through. 
If you're saying, I want to go pick that flag up and wave it, and you can't make yourself do it, because, and you even want to. It's not like you don't want to do it. You want to do it, and you can't. You might ought to check and see if that's a demonic spirit. Okay, just saying. Just saying. Not, you know, don't, you know, just saying. I would check that. If I wanted to do something and I'm not free to do that, I have to recognize it's something other than just me in that equation. Okay? So let's, let's learn to deal with the resistances so that we can break through because we have to learn to control the atmosphere and the environment. Okay, we have to learn to do that. And the only way to change the environment is to open your mouth and to release the breath of God into it. Or you can dance. You can move. You can create. What Anya's doing back there, creating and painting, is releasing the spirit. So that's that. Now, are y'all ready to get uh, one more? I think I got one more before we get that, get to the lesson. So let's learn to use our earth suit, our body, in this realm like we use our spirit bodies in the spirit. Now if you're up in the spirit, and you're in the spirit, and you're doing things, do you ever tell your spirit body to stop engaging? Like, why are you doing that? Spirit body, why are you doing that? Why are you worshiping spirit body? Stop that. But that's what we do to our flesh body. When we want to lift our hands or we want to, to shout or we want to move, that's what we're telling our earth body to do. Why are you trying to do it? You, there ain't no, you know, we say, well, there's just no need for all that. Well, tell your spirit body that. And watch how fast you will leave that realm. You want to shut down engaging in the spirit? Disengage your spirit man then and see how, see how well you can maneuver in the spirit. So as we use our voice in our body, we govern as king priests releasing the culture and the ways of heaven into the earth. Okay, that's, and that's done as we use and engage our body. Now I always will emphasize this because being the church and an ecclesia requires our participation. Okay, the days of sitting in a building, if that's, if, that's, if that's you going to church, okay, I want to encourage you to go to church. Okay, you go to church. But if you want to be the church, then you have to participate. And in this house and in this ecclesia, we are called to be the church. Don't, 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 you know, you know how you can tell what your mindset is when you're leaving to come? I'm going to church. You've already positioned yourself as a spectator. You framed up yourself to be a spectator. Instead of framing up yourself that you are the church going to participate in the movement of the Holy Spirit and what he has for us. There is a completely different structure that you're framing up for yourself to step into once you get here. And it does, you can do it at the bottom of those stairs all the way up. You can structure yourself in one of those ways as you're walking up those steps. We're in the upper room. As you ascend up those steps, position yourself in that posture. Again, we don't go to church. We are the church. That's another little cliche saying. But it's, it's completely restructuring how we, how we enter into this building. So, ready to get to our lesson? Okay, now I'm going to start by laying a biblical foundation. And I'm, I want to really, really emphasize, do not be too familiar with the scriptures that, that we're going to talk about tonight. 
because if you are, you will miss the new oil. Virginia was talking about it, new fire, new oil. You will miss, and I've got it, you will miss the new oil that is being poured out in these scriptures for this age. There is a new oil and a new fire that is going to, be, that is going to begin resting on these scriptures that we're talking about. Now, we are all probably grown up. Well, I don't know if y'all, I, I didn't grow up in the charismatic world, okay? I grew up in the Baptist world and transitioned into the charismatic world. And, and that is a quite a jump, okay? But it's a required jump. So we're going to start in John 4.14, which is going to be slide number 21. working? No. Is it up? No. Okay. All right, well, I'm going to read it, and so really, really listen. If you have a Bible, that would be amazing. Why do we not bring our Bibles? Can anybody just tell me? Okay, I'm just asking, just asking. <laughs> John 4.14. 4, but whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. But the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. So I believe that this is a picture of salvation. And we see that it is Yeshua is the one who gives the water. Now he's the original water bearer. But the water is the spirit. And if, if we go back to that altar where he was slain before the foundation, his life released Holy Spirit. Okay? So, so we, we go back to that place. Now the water that he gives becomes a wellspring of living water within us. Now, again, none of these are scriptures we haven't heard or read probably a hundred times. Now, the next verse that we're going to look at is our text verse again, and that's going to be slide 23. Is it just dead? It's just not working? I think it's... What? I think it was because he was making you do a page through something thing. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, we can do that. So we're going to go to John 7:37, and I'm going to read that again. It was the text verse. It says, On that day, the great day of the feast, Yeshua stood and cried out, saying, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. And who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. But this he spoke concerning the Spirit. So we know that this fountain of water that has this wellspring that is burst open in us is the Holy Spirit, right? You can put those two scriptures together and that's what you get. And so as we're looking at that, we, I, I've got, let me keep moving on my notes. Now when we are born again, we have a fountain of living water within us that we are to drink from. Oh, goodness. Yeah. Will it reach? Gotta love technology. When it works, it's great. When it doesn't, it's horrible. I'm going to turn my computer off. I can't get it in. I can't get it in. Okay, there it went. Oh, Lord. All right. I'm going to put it, well, I'm going to put it there and try to read, read from another one. I'm not going to be able to do it. So y'all are going to see my notes. 
which I'm not excited about. Okay. Do what? Well, I need my notes. So. I need my I need my notes because I didn't memorize it. So when we're when we're born again, we have the fountain of living water within us that we're to drink from. Now that water, that fountain is for us. It's how we are refreshed. It's how we are sustained in our life in God. That we are to consistently drink from that fountain. Now that's not the only um, only thing that we're given to do that. Now do you know that we are to eat from the fruit of the Spirit? That we get to eat the fruit and drink the water of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit just isn't for gift to give away so people will come to Jesus. Because that's how we've been programmed to think is I just, I've got to let the whole, I've got to get all these fruits of the Spirit in my life and then because everybody's going to see all this fruit and I'm kind to someone or I'm loving to someone and I give them that fruit of kindness, then they're going to get saved, okay? Now that's a little bit to do with it, but it's primarily for us to eat. In the garden, there are, there are trees that we eat from that are to sustain us. And that's how we have a vibrant life in God, is in our intimacy and friendship with Holy Spirit. And as we're intimate in that relationship, he, he allows us to drink from him and to eat from him. And that's how, again, that's how we're sustained. Now, everything we need to live a vibrant, victorious, overcoming life, we can find in that fountain of living water. Nothing is lacking. It is complete, has everything that we will ever need. But having a fountain of living water is different from a river flowing out of us. Right. It's different. They have different purposes. They have different levels of intensity. Do you know a river, what makes a river a river? is it's water that flows from a higher elevation to a lower elevation. Now just let the Spirit teach you what that means when it talks about a river. For us to engage with the river of life and those living waters as a river, they're having to come out of a realm of higher elevation down into this realm. That's what creates the river. And again, we need, we need to go deeper. We've got to go deeper into this. Now, I'm going to just give it a, a personal example because a lot of times we're, we, we don't know how, how to engage in sometimes the deeper things. Now, when I'm engaging the living waters, uh, like from the fountain, where I just need a drink, you know, like, I've, you, know, like you have a really chaotic day and you're just kind of out of sorts, Y'all have those days? Yeah. Never. Wow, I'm going to hum out and hang at your house. Okay, I live by myself and I have those days. So I can't imagine if you live with other people what happens. And what I often do when I feel that swirl around me or any, any level of chaos or disruption in my inner peace, I literally will lay down on my couch, and I will lean back and submerge myself in the water. And while I'm there, I begin drinking from that water. And what I happens to me is that living water begins to bring all of my being back into alignment, and I'm re-centered, and I'm refocused. And it just brings me, it's, it's also, the river of life is all call, also called the river of peace. See, it brings us into that state of being where we are at rest and at peace. That's what the waters will do for you. And so we just have to learn to stop and engage in that. And it, it, it can, you know, it doesn't have to take an hour and a half for that to happen. You know, then we don't have time. It can take five minutes. 
And it only takes a little bit because the water is alive. It's living and it contains everything you need at that moment will go into your spirit being and into your soul and into your body. And we have to learn to do that. Or we're going to always be in that place of chaos. That just, just, just that state of not being in that place where we're actually can enter rest to govern. See, we can't, we can't really govern if we're not in rest. We're going, to be, we're going to be governing out of chaos, which will create chaos. But if we can govern in that place of rest, then we can release rest and peace into, into creation. Now again, there's more for us than just the fountain of living water, as grand as it is. I mean, it's grand. And if that's all you have been, that's all you partake of, you'll, you can have a vibrant life in God. You, I mean, you really can. But if you want to affect outside of you, you need a river flowing out of you. And we're, we're going to get to that. Now, John 10.10 10 speaks about the abundant life. Remember, Yeshua came to give us life and life abundantly. So again, we're talking about this, um, always this abundance, always more than enough. And if, we don't, if we're not living in that, if we're living in lack, then we have to get into this water. I mean, we've, we've got to get into the water for that to happen. Now, my question is for us is when did the fountain of living water begin to spring up in the heart of man? It says once the Holy Spirit was given after Yeshua was glorified. Now when did this occur? <laughs> you got two accounts. You got, if you can read, it's up there. There were two incidents of this happening. Was that? No, they didn't get water there. Okay, we're going to look at John 20. That's going to, I, and I'm going to have to read it because, well, I'm, let me go to it. Is that up there? Okay, John 20. Um, it says, Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, Yeshua came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. Now mind, this was after his crucifixion and after his resurrection, but he had not yet ascended. This is in that period of time. Okay, And he says, Peace be with you. When he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. So Yeshua said to them again, Peace to you as the Father has sent me, I also send you. And when he said this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. Now, th this is the next phrase. This is the one we kind of struggle with. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Now, that sounds priesthoody to me. Okay, that's kind of priest. That's kind of like sounding like a priest right there. Okay, just a little bit. Okay, just a little bit. Now, in John, this is the actual transition point from the Old Covenant to the New Covenant. This was the point. In all of the time, it, this was the point of old and new. The old was done and the new was, comes forth. Now, when did his followers actually get born from above? I think it's at that moment right there. I think it was right there. Because they were under the old covenant until Christ was crucified. That was a transitioning. Okay? Everybody following? Okay. So that was the transition point between the old and the new. 
usually it takes hundreds of years to transition. Rarely is it, rarely can we identify a specific point in time. It was what, 40 days from this crucifixion to Pentecost? 40, 50 days? 50 days. In that 50 day period, everything changed. A new age was come, a new age came forth, and the old covenant passed away and the new covenant was established. That's pretty intense to me. And so what did he tell, what did he tell them after he, he um, released and said, receive the Holy Spirit? He said, go to Jerusalem and wait for the promise. what he told them. So in Acts 1-4, is that, that's up there, it says, and being assembled together with them. See, he showed up again. <laughs> he commanded them to not depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard of me. Now, when did, he, when did, he, when did they hear of this promise? It's our text. In John 7, 37 through 39, was when he gave them that promise. That if you drink of me, I'll give you water. And, and basically he said, but they, the spirit had not been given then. And so he's saying, go wait. When I told, remember when I told you that I was going to give to you living water and it would flow out of your belly? That was the promise that he gave them? We're now at that place. And he said, For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, in Judea, and Samaria, and to the uttermost part, well, to the end of the earth. That was King James snuck out right there. <laughs> the uttermost parts of the earth. I'm a King James junkie, sorry. Now we see their obedience in, in Acts chapter 1, verse 12. They were gathered in the upper room and they were praying together. How? In unity. Being of the same mind. They, were, they came together because they were waiting for the purpose, the promise. That was their purpose in gathering, that they were in obedience to what Yeshua had told them. And then we see they waited there. Now, y'all know I have lots of favorite verses, right? Okay, well, this is one of my favorites in Acts chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost had fully come. Now, do you realize for Thousands of years, the Jewish people had, had observed Pentecost. That they were faithful to follow the pattern of Pentecost. They honored that feast. They honored that day. And this is the day of Pentecost fully came. It was no longer the pattern from the Old Testament. Those hundreds of years, it was the fulfillment of that day in their, in their midst. It said when Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord, it's not a Honda accord, in one place. Okay? They were of the same mind in, in unity. And suddenly... Do you realize we were praying this out in song tonight? Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come and fill this place. Come and fill this temple. Come and fill this temple. I'm telling you, it's one of my favorite verses. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind. And it filled the whole house where they were sitting. 
Then there appeared to them divided tongues as a fire, and one sat upon each of them. How glorious would that be? Awesome. Awesome. And it said, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So we see the promise and we see the fulfillment of that promise. Now, I believe the baptism of the Holy Spirit is when the fountain breaks forth and becomes a river of living water inside of us. And there's some things that over, over the next probably however long, we're going we're gonna to look at this river in, in kind of in detail. But one of its main attributes we find in Ezekiel 47.9, and we'll read it in a little bit. It talks about, in Ezekiel, and we'll read the verse in a minute, it talks about everywhere this river goes, it brings life. That's how we are a manifestation as a life-giving spirit. Now, drink from that fountain that, that Yeshua gave to us at salvation. Drink from it. Let it vitalize you, let it give you everything you need. But if we want to affect this realm, we have to engage with that river. We have to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And the interesting thing is one of the manifestations, one of the manifestations of holy <laughs> baptism is that we speak yeah. in tongues. Now, I know we love to speak in tongues internally. Again, it will build you up. Nothing wrong with it. It's good for you to do that. But what, did we, what have we learned about engaging our body to bring it into this realm? We have to open our mouth and release the sound of a rushing river and mighty wind out of our mouth. Now, if we want to be spirit beings moving in the earth realm, we have got to learn how the spirit moves and requires us to move to move with the spirit. We don't get to decide how we do that. You, again, we can sit, we can sit quietly and pray internally in the spirit. And it will build you up. I'm not against that. I think we should do that more. <laughs> I really do. But I'm talking about affecting our surroundings and the world at hand. We're going to have to engage our body and do that. Now, in Ezekiel, I want us to read Ezekiel 47.9. I think it's up there by now because I'm controlling it, so if it's on my screen, it's up there, right? Okay. Ooh, I'm sharp. <laughs> and this is what it says in Ezekiel 47, 9. And it will come about that every living creature which swarms in every place where the river goes will live. So do you see a characteristics of the river? Life and people gather there. People are hungry and thirsty. They really are. I mean, it's a cruel, hard world out there. They are looking for life and substance. Now, I, I really believe, and I think this is in those, all those slides that we went past, I believe God has been setting up this generation for one of the greatest awakenings of all times. Because they are, they are in the realm of insanity at this point. They have been taken captive by a principality 
that is creating insanity. And in that, there is going to be a birthing of a hunger for truth and righteousness. Yes. Yes. And so we have to be in a position to allow the river of life to overtake them. Okay? And so we're in preparation for doing that. As we, the more we engage our body in the releasing of the spirit in our midst, they gather. Now you can get three or four and go out into the streets and they'll gather there too. Okay? So I'm not talking about it just all being about coming into a building. But we have to be releasing the flow of the spirit. Now, I'm going to finish reading this. So, and it says that they will live, and there will be many fish, for these waters go there, and the others become fresh. So everything will live where the river goes. So everywhere we go, as we release the Spirit, it will bring life to everything it touches. Is there, is there a situation in your world that needs to change? I raise my hand. Okay. Release the life of the Spirit into it. And allow everything that is needed for it to change to find its way there. Now, I do believe that the Sonship Movement has its emphasis on the Father and Yeshua, because He was the Son, but we've focused a lot on the Father. But we cannot forget about Holy Spirit. Now, I, I could say a lot right here, and I'm not, because how our language has dishonored Holy Spirit. The language that we use dishonors her. And I said her. And I'm not backing off of that. It amazes me because I think I'm gonna get on this. I'm gonna get on the. I'm gonna get on the. I'm gonna get on the pony and ride a minute. Okay. <laughs> it amazes me that we will sit and say the Holy Spirit has all the feminine attributes of God, but we won't call her a she, because the system has told us a man-dominated, dominated system has told us that God is only male. Holy Spirit, as a female, is part of the divine picture of the family. God the Father, Holy Spirit the Mother, produce the Son, Yeshua. It's the perfect picture. And we wonder why there's gender dysphoria. Now, now, tonight, before we um, leave, I want us to take, uh, we're going to take a moment, and we're going to just repent for grieving and ghosting her. Did you hear that word? <laughs> ghosting. What do we call the Holy Spirit? The Holy Ghost. <laughs> but in our culture, what does ghosting mean? We're going to ignore that. Do you see the... The, the cunning and craftiness of the principality that is ruling this age right now. The very power we dishonor because we follow the language of this culture. Now, I can, I can stay on this pony for a minute if I need to. Is that enough for tonight? I think it's enough for tonight. Okay. Now, there was one point I cannot... I need to make, but I can't find it in my notes. So I'm just going to stop there. But I do, I do want us to realize that we're going to really begin swimming in this river. Whenever I teach, probably for the next little while, I want to talk about the river. And we're going to start in the beginning. Because <laughs> we've actually already started in the beginning. Do you remember that? That was at the... At the at the altar where Yeshua was slain and the water came forth, that was the beginning, okay? But the next beginning is in Genesis when it talks about the rivers. Remember the river that 
one river that broke into four, four, four rivers. That is why they named it Four Rivers, the barbecue store. In case you were wondering. He is a believer, so he calls it Four Rivers. That's why he called it Four Rivers. Okay? So we're, we're going to begin there and, and learning, and we're going to learn how to swim. But tonight, the, the focus and the, the emphasis <coughs> that I want us to, to grasp is for for things to manifest in the earth, we have to engage our bodies. We have to do that. And when we're all, you know, how many, how many of y'all are praying for something and you want it to manifest? Okay, I, I am. I need, I need my kidneys. You know, me and my kidneys are, okay, I need, I need a new set of kidneys. Okay, now I know, and, I, and I'm focused in on that. And so... We have to learn to get into the water and learn to... Do you, do you know what else is in the waters? The mysteries. And the treasures, there's treasures down there too. And so the river, it's my, it, it is my favorite place. In, in, in the spirit, I like being able to be in the river. So we're going to be going over that, but just recognize you, we have to engage our body to bring things into manifestation. Now, the practical part of that, and I'm just going to say it out loud, and it's going to hurt when I say it, is that we have to discipline our bodies, and we have to bring our bodies into right alignment. We have to have healthy bodies. Okay? And we have extreme extremely wonderful resources that participate here. Deb, Ashley, Pat, Virginia and Sean know all kinds of things about how we can get our body in better alignment. Because our bodies can take a beating in the spirit. When, you're, when you begin moving and doing some things, I, you know, I challenge you, okay, just as a, ch a challenge, is to pray out loud in tongues for an hour and see how your body <laughs> reacts to that. Your throat starts hurting, your body gets tired, you want to sit down. I mean, it's just amazing how those two things have to work together. And so part, part of that, part of what we're going to be going through is us getting our bodies in alignment. We, I mean, we have to. We have to. I mean, poor Daniel fell down as if he was dead. He was in good shape. He'd been Daniel fasting. <laughs> okay? So, so we have to be, we, we really have to be serious. I mean, it's, I mean, to be a participant in the kingdom and in the earth realm, it takes some grit. It really does take some grit. Now, there's grace for it. Okay? There will be grace for it. But there is a level of discipline that we'll enter into. And so I'm, you know, I'm, I'm as, I want to say probably as out of shape, not as ever, in the, in the, well, in the spirit, I'm talking about in the spirit. Um, but I'm fairly out of shape in the spirit from where I have been. I mean, it was nothing to do worship for two and a half hours like we did tonight and not, not be, not be uh, limping the next day. Because see, when you're under that anointing in the presence, it's easy. But you know what? That thing lifts. And then your body is going to respond to that. And we have to, be in the, we, have to, we have to be able to carry that kind of anointing. And so... That's all I'm going to talk about that because that hurts. <laughs> okay, so any, any questions or comments? And then we'll take a minute to do that. And then we'll go into uh, communion. Nobody has anything. Uh, do you recommend um, when you talked about 
uh, resting in the river of life, uh, engaging in your imagination until it becomes something that's you know is truly happening. Um, yes. Um, if we yeah, see, there's. I was going to talk about that. That's that slide right there. <laughs> is learning to hold um, hold images in. Um, in our heart, in our mind, in our spirit. Okay, now, to me, the imagination, I'm gonna be, try to be real brief, but simplify it, I wanna simplify things. Our imagination, to me, is simply the, the organ or the mechanism God has given us to create images. And it's what the Holy Spirit uses to drop information in picture form into our being. So when I engage my imaging process center, I have to have an anchor. Now for me, I, um, I used to scuba dive. And that's all about being underwater breathing. So I have an anchor of what it means to be underwater and breathe. Now, I also used to love being in the water. So I, I have a lot of anchors of what it feels like to be in water. And what you allow your imagination is to form a picture and feelings of what that feels like. You draw on your memories to pull that up and create a picture for you so that when you in, are engaging with your intention to be in that water, you're, you enter in through that picture. And it, when you enter in, it becomes spirit. It doesn't, it, it, it's, it's just, the more you do it, the more you practice, the more instantly the, the imagination becomes spirit. And then you can't tell them apart sometimes. I think we, I think we get too intellectual about whether I'm in the spirit or I'm in my imagination? The answer is yes. If you're in your imagination, you are using the God-given organ to produce an image. Huh? Right. So it doesn't matter. Don't worry about it. Just, you know, just get in the river and see, let, let that be. Just let that be. And you'll see, you'll be our fruit of it. You know, you will. <clears throat> heartmath.org. They have been writing a couple of articles um, in their blogs all about this, about using your heart as that gate of imagination. And what the process, what happens is it goes from your heart into your brain and actually creates narrow pathways. And eventually that creates a whole new reality. So they are developing this science that's behind a spiritual reality. Um, we've talked about this before, but some of you guys might not have been here or whatever, but so the imagination is just the doorway that you go, that you enter in. The Bible calls it the eyes of your heart. And that doorway needs to be both open. If it's been shut down, it needs to be cleansed if it's been defiled. So, um, I've got a prayer on my website. I've got a free download of a prayer to open and cleanse the imagination gate. So if you, you can get it for free, go to virginiakillingsworth.com, and then on the store, you just click on, I think it says free class handouts, and um, it's either, they all come together in a folder, or you can pick it out individually. I forget which one, but it says prayer to, to open and cleanse the imagination gate, and uh, if, if you're having trouble seeing, pray that out loud every day, and it will unlock that for you so you can enter in easily. Yeah, I, I'm... I th honestly think the imagination is spirit. Because see, fantasy and imagination are different. And I think we've been taught that the imagination is bad in c our culture, you know, and, and dreaming and all those things are bad. But, but fantasy is not imagination. You're using your imagination when you're fantasizing and you're making these images. 
but the, the image, the imagination in and of itself is spirit. So. Jesus said, come as little children, and I can tell you from having grandchildren, they have great imaginations. Mm -hmm. Their gates haven't been defiled yeah. yet. Until we shut them down. That's right. Until we shut them down. So I feel like, um, just to, to clarify on the difference between fantasy and imagination, when you're in fantasy, there's no connection to fruit really being produced of what you are imagining. It's like clouds and wind without rain. So it's, it's just this exercise that's held in something that doesn't bear anything, doesn't produce anything. And it's more for entertainment than manifestation. And w when you're truly using your imagination in the way that God intended, there has to be an expectation that you're engaging in some form of reality or something that can be... What you said about um, stopping to drink from the river, um, that is exactly where I've been all week because the Lord reminded me that, like, we, we had dinner with Roderick and Sarah, I think, like, two years ago, right after New Year's, and I was talking to them about getting my body in alignment to carry the glory. Like, and we were having this conversation. It had been several years. And... I had not made any progress in that area, and the Lord showed me because I had not learned to take care of my. We are to minister from the overflow, like we are to fill ourselves up first. And I always like prided myself, and I'm a conduit, you know. And He's like, "No, you're not. <laughs> you're a reservoir." You know, I love you as much as the person you're ministering to, mm -hmm. you know. So um, in that way, I was just, it was a wrong um, form of self-denial um, to think that I was doing something, you know, holy <laughs> right. by doing that. So he, he's had me in that all week long about taking communion which I've learned to do more recently, and drinking from the river, and just spending time receiving from him, because that has to be the first step towards getting your body in alignment. I began to build energy, spiritual energy, towards the next step because of that. 